friends, we're back with another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Like, oh my god! Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, fellow tubaholics, no need to freak out here. Yes, you're seeing an integrated circuit circuit. You see, my microphone preamp, it developed a very nasty fault. So this is my microphone preamp, my work in progress microphone preamp. Now in a video long, 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 long ago, I used this box to make another microphone preamp. Well, I've taken all the guts out. And if we take a look on the front of it, if I can move this around, and the power supply wire is in the way. You can see that it uses a vacuum tube. Yes, it's a vacuum tube microphone preamp, which is what you're hearing right now, actually. I was going to make this a hybrid microphone preamp, and I still am. Now, originally, I put in a little circuit here, a little three transistor circuit, which was an audio compressor. So, no matter whether I'm standing far away from the microphone or really up close to the microphone, that little circuit would level things out and prevent things from clipping and stuff like that. Except that circuit developed a fault. I don't know what went wrong with it, but it would. Some intermittent problem where it would sometimes decide to distort everything and other times it would decide to sound absolutely fine and you might remember in my video I am sick of this that was recorded through this microphone preamp with a faulty compressor circuit so you can hear the distortion there now I first thought well you know it's a tube circuit so maybe there's a loose connection or something or maybe the maybe it's the tube itself so I replaced it now I've got an ECC81 in there at the moment. I originally had an ECC83, but I decided to swap that out for an ECC81, see if it was the tube. Because the pinouts and the voltages are the same, so it doesn't really matter. Oh yes, the distortion went and the sound quality returned, but not for long. The distortion soon returned so I did a little probing around, trying to find where the distortion was coming from. It wasn't coming from the tube, that's for sure. That part of the circuit's working absolutely fine, no problem. The problem lies within the compressor circuit. Yes, the compressor circuit developed a fault. Going through the circuit with a fine tooth comb, performing a lot of percussive maintenance on it, still could not find the problem. Checked all the connections, reflowed a few of the connections that looked a bit dodgy. Did everything I possibly could to try to find the problem. But you know how these intermittent problems are, they are difficult to pinpoint. So I decided to build a brand new compressor right here. Don't know why I'm shouting. This one has a much smaller footprint but exactly the same circuit as the one that it had previously. So we're going to run some tests on this and see how well it works. And for those of you interested in the schematic, this is the schematic. It's supposed to be a microphone preamp, but I found it works more as a compressor. So There's the circuit for the, those of you who are interested. You might have seen the circuit before on my channel. And that brings us to the circuit that I have on the breadboard. Now, what is this? It's a sine wave generator, which I'm going to use to test it. And here's the circuit, for those of you interested. Um, it's kind of difficult to get this at the right angle here. Because I'm sort of right angles to the camera here. So if I move the thing up, it moves sideways or whatever. There's the sine wave, I mean, there's the tone generator. 
And I've got that hooked up to my scope. Skews the mess here. I don't know why the camera's always picking that up, making it look worse than it already is. But I'm going to turn on the power to it. And there we go. You can see it's oscillating. Now, for some reason, this camera has a terrible trouble seeing my scope screen. I'll just adjust the lighting here so you can see it a bit better. Okay, let's just adjust that. And as you can see, we have a nice clean sine wave. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this little circuit on the end of it. And I'm going to crank it right up. Okay, I've got everything all hooked up now. And I must say, things are looking good. Also, just as a matter of curiosity, I'm just going to find out what the frequency is that this is oscillating at. So let's put my meter on here and see what frequency we have. This is about 1.6 kilohertz. But anyway, we've got the output of this chip. It's just an ordinary quad op amp. Nothing special, but the output of that is going into this capacitor to block out any DC, and that's going into this pin on the potentiometer, and the middle pin is going off to channel A on my scope, and also this middle pin is going into this little compressor that I made, and I've got the output of the compressor, which is this wire here, just rigged into the scope there onto channel B. So here's the output on the scope. This is the output from the compressor. This is the input to the compressor. It looks like we've got a little bit of distortion right there. If you can see, the, the bottom is a bit flattening out a bit. But we we'll just increase the volume of channel A. You can also see it right there. So that's actually not an artifact of the compressor. That's uh, that's on the actual chip's output itself. Not much I can do about that. I've got these both on one volt per division, and we're getting almost two volts peak to peak from the compressor, and maybe about one volt peak to peak going in. So there is a little bit of amplification there. Anyway, I'm going to turn the potentiometer now. It's a bit of a dodgy connection, but you can see I'm lowering the way the input and the output waveform is staying about the same. There it is, now it's going down. Now I'm going to increase the input waveform. I'm just going to turn this right up. Right up, as you can see. The output waveform is barely changed at all. It might just be a couple of millivolts more, that's about it. Now what we gotta do is put that gotta put that in my preamp and see how well it works. Just testing it as it is right now with the actual with the circuit put into it. And once again you are hearing the output from this thing. Okay it's time for my ugly face to be on the camera again. Anyway I'm just doing this to show you how it compensates for the different microphone distances. So when I'm speaking to the microphone, into the microphone like this, it's going to pick up quite strongly. But if I hold the microphone out at arm's length, still talking in the same volume of voice, but the microphone's not going to hear it as much. You can quite hear it quite clearly how that's compensating for the change in the sound level. So I think that's working pretty good. So we're just going to measure some voltages. I've got the microphone facing away from me, but I can't really be asked to do anything about it. Let's measure the voltage at the first plate, which comes over to this capacitor here. Okay, 134. Yeah, about 134 volts on the first plate. Let's see what we got on the second plate, which comes out to this capacitor here. And then that goes into this little circuit. Let's see what we got there. 133 volts. 
probably hearing some weird noises while I'm doing that. I can't really get my meter in there to measure the bias voltage, but it's probably about minus one volts or something like that. I just measure one of these plates. I mean, I just measure one of these cathodes. Here, let's see. Okay, we go about 2.2 volts. And I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna go over here to the power supply and see what our actual B plus is. Okay. 233 volts. Let's see what our low voltage is coming out of the power supply. Okay, 16.8 volts. And then we've got this regulator here to regulate that to 12. So we should have about 12 volts on this bit here. 11.98, it's close enough. Okay, well here's the schematic. What a mess. Well that's basically the whole circuit. We got a main microphone amplifier up here. And we got the compressor circuit down here. Which, like I said before, it does provide some amplification, but it really isn't enough to amplify a microphone well. So that's why using an extra stage of amplification right here, in this case a valve or a tube, depending on what, we, what you want to call it. So I'll go through a few key facts on this thing. So you might notice that I have actually drawn in the filament to show how that's connected because on most tube circuits you don't see the filament but you know I thought I'd draw it in so you can see how it's connected. Also you can boost the gain of this circuit by putting in a 47 microfarad capacitor here. What I've done is I've connected that to a switch so that can be switched in and out. If you want even more gain you could put another capacitor across this resistor here say 47 microfarads as well. This is to adjust the overall gain right here. So this stage of the micro this stage of the valve amplifies the microphone and that goes out here. Gets amplified further by this stage, this side of the tube, and out from that we go into a capacitor and protection LEDs to prevent to protect this circuit from any high voltage spikes we might have. And that goes all the way over here into our compressor circuit. That's what, and this is where you connect your tape recorder or computer or amplifier or whatever. And the way I understand that this circuit works is this transistor here is what does the actual amplification. And some of that goes into this transistor here. And that's rectified to DC by this bit here. So... The voltage on across this capacitor depends on how much, on how loud the sound is. So, loud sound, this capacitor will have quite a bit of voltage on it. If there's not much sound, there won't be so much voltage across it. And then that goes out into this transistor here. So when there's a lot of sound, this transistor will have low resistance. When there's not much sound, this transistor will have quite a high resistance. So we've got like a voltage divider by with this. 15k resistor in this transistor here, so that that's how it regulates the sound volume. I already gotta go and get some sleep now. So anyway, I'll leave you with that, and that's the Cool Dude Clem amplifier. Now I gotta try and get some sleep because I've only had about three hours because I'm a raging insomniac. So until next time, goodbye.